Good morning. It is now Tuesday morning and I'm going after those same birds again. I guess I like the abuse. I think today the plan is going to be I'm going to stay actually on the road until they gobble and then try to move in. I'm going to kind of stage par uh, parallel to their to what I'm calling their strut zone. And yesterday I think my problem was that where I was sitting they really couldn't walk much further past me so there was no need for them to try to come to me because they weren't going to continue that way because there's a, a flooded inlet behind me. I also didn't expect them to be roosted that close to that flooded inlet. I was going to come in cautiously there and get up closer. I wanted to be actually up more where their strut zone is. So that's what I'm going to do and so basically, if they're roosted where they were yesterday, I'm probably just going to slip in the woods 50 yards. If they are roosted to my left, I'll probably slip in 150 yards and get about in that roost area. If they're to my right, I'll slip in 150 yards to that roost area. So I think it's all, all going to be in that roost area. Because if you go too far to the left... The trees become just these tiny little trashy little trees and they're real tight together. There's nothing really to, to, to hide your profile. And so, yeah. And then in late morning, if I hear a gobble, I'm going to close the distance. Probably not going to call back right away, but I'm going to close the distance and, and then wait for that second gobble. Or close the distance and call. Soft call, medium call, loud call. Because today is my last day to mess with them for a little while. Or at least because Wednesday is going to be rainy. I'll probably be in a ground blind over at Bart's place. So, be a little more aggressive today. Gobble time's about a half hour. It takes about four minutes to walk there from right here. So we'll see you out there. I forgot my other camera at the car. But we've already had our first gobble. There's it is again. I've got a pretty good idea where that is. There's kind of a spot down here that has a nice clearing, but it has a handful of mature trees in it. I feel like he's right in there. But man, the canopy is open, real open. These folks just drove past me at a high rate of speed. Definitely in plain view of that gobbler. Wonder what that's going to do to him. This one is just not that far in front of me. I've given him enough to know that I'm over here. If he doesn't come down in a little bit, I'll probably do him one more time. But that's it. I'm not doing crazy calls either, just a few, uh, light, light clucks. Alright, so it sounds like he's getting further from me. And he's heading to the big creek. So I'm gonna go try to get ahead of him, I guess, basically toward that strut zone, which ain't that far up. You find a place to dip into these woods, get back in there a little bit. Yeah, he sure is hitting it over there. I don't know if you can hear that. He's not real, real close, but he's close got to be inside 300. I just hope he doesn't find any hens. Dang, he's doing it. I'm afraid to call because it seems like when I call to these jokers, they go the other way. I'm sure they're heavily pressured. I know they're heavily pressured. We're like nine days into the season. It's just right out there somewhere. Two, 250? You know what, I really, really got to figure out what's over there. 
seem to like this little pocket of woods, that's for sure. I need to figure out what it looks like the whole way up and down. Sounds like he's a little more to the left. Hopefully that means he's going to come up in this way. Boy, if he ends up on this, I'm on a little piece of high ground here. There's a ditch behind me. There's a ditch to my front about 45 yards. And it drops off behind me. It's not a ditch, but it drops off. And this is where I think they were strutting. This is where I sat up yesterday for the last several hours. My decoys were in this direction. He's gobbling. I hope he continues to gobble so I know where he's at. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to take it. He is over there just going to town. to close a solid hundred yards on him and then maybe call <clears throat> one time he sounds like he's a little further one time it sounds like he's a little closer i just think it's his direction he's facing but he's got a nice little spot over there for strutting too man he's just going to it that one sounded a little quieter definitely more to the left and maybe closer because there's more trash between us and him Mm. Dang. I don't think this microphone's picking it up, but he is having himself a time over there. God, I hate to not be moving on a goblin bird. I gotta try to get closer. I can't take it. inside 150. Right down the gun barrel. I've heard what sounds like maybe two gobbles over there. Could be why there's so many gobbles from over there. It might be two. They're just, they're just not that far. Hoping you can hear that. I was just thinking I've got a call to them, but I'm afraid to based off the way they've acted the last two days. <clears throat> I'd love for them just to come down this green stuff here, this green stuff over here. I gotta do something soon. There's definitely two over there. Maybe if I call now, their jealousy will play against them. They don't seem to want to budge. I've told twice. I didn't know I'm here, I'm trying to cast my call behind me. That gobble sounded much quieter. I hope they're not going the other way. That one sounded a little better. The two different gobbles are pretty different. Could be a Tom and a Jake. Hopefully not with hens. Boy, all of a 
of a sudden they just shut off and I got nervous thinking they're coming in and I just heard a gobble a good ways out it sounds like they're moving away that's why I've been nervous to call to them they're either just simply drifting with hens or they go away from the call and make make the hen come to them birds are crafty these birds are crafty at this point what I do is since they seem to have moved off I move forward into the spot they were just gobbling from, set up, and give them a call. Eventually, I start catching glimpses of a turkey. That just happened, folks. That just happened. That just happened. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Public land bird here in Missouri. Where is he? Might be a few steps further than I thought he was. But boy, I had a nice clean shot through here and he was periscoped, looking hard. Looking hard. That's a big boy. I'll show him to you in a minute here. We'll try to keep it PG. Folks, that was awesome. That was awesome. I've been chasing a bird down in this block of woods. This is day three. Those geese aren't happy. It is 7.54, which means I've been on these guys for about two hours of legal time 
at this point or this guy or whatever and he looks like a big bird to me really big the shot was a little further than I intended the tree I was next to I wasn't in front of I was next to 46 yards from right here it's about six more than I would prefer but it is just about the absolute max range of that load and choke combo which is the old federal third degree in the Primos tight wad choke in the Mossberg Youth Phantom so after a few minutes of me rambling on I hear a guy coming up to check out the bird and see what happened I got a, another fella coming in I believe we chatted a day or two ago. Yep. I'm glad you got it. Was that you that drove by me this morning? I was standing on the road? Yeah, I didn't see you standing there. <laughs> You went up, up on top of the ridge up there? Look at that, two, that's two average beards right here. Uh, yeah. With all that chit chatting, I forgot to get some good video of the bird, but he was nice enough to take some photos of me. And he's a real stud bird. Check out these double beards. And so as I'm walking out, I'm explaining how the day went, but I wasn't quite as clear and concise as I could be. So he was gobbling on the roost. I got in somewhat close. He went down, gobbled around there, and then moved off. I looped around, got to the strut zone, sat in the strut zone because I knew I had beat him there and thought it might come down into there. Well, they hung up at about 250. So I moved forward, cut that distance in half, gave him a little call. They didn't do anything. They moved away from me, so I moved forward into that spot they were just gobbling from, called, and got them to come in. And I think that was the key to the hunt today was they didn't come down to what I was calling the strut zone, even though they were strutting there two days in a row. And he is a hefty chunk to carry out of the woods. We'll probably end up closing this video with some weight measurements at Bart's, so I'll sign off from here and uh, we'll pick you up back there. Oh, that's heavy. Tar scale is a little different. Our scales are different, so your, yours is probably another... 23. Yeah, by my scale, his would have been another six ounces would have broke 23 pounds but look at this look at that crazy is that that's like two average beards this one's got a lot of short ones on it pretty sure it's just two I don't think there's a third one up in there Right about one right there, huh? Ones? Fair enough. I will take some ones. Look at the beards, man. It's crazy. Should grab the end. Put me on it. Go ahead and grab it. Put where it needs to be. Tackle that ten and a half. The longest one is. Ten and a half. Ten and an eighth? Yeah. A pair of 10 inch beards. Crazy, crazy. Well, I think that's gonna conclude this video. I cannot express to you how rewarding that was. Public land bird. Turns out he's a really, really nice bird. But more importantly, the hunt was awesome. 
I was mobile. I felt more like a turkey hunter. That was awesome. Hope you liked this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down there. And as always, thanks for watching.